how every moment becomes a gift. in the company of my Baba. His company illuminates the pure allowance that the soul is complete non-resistance to anything or any experience that may be appearing here and now. It's like the being is with the Father with open arms and an open heart, heart of the angel. accepts this moment as a perfect gift. This experience of this moment, whatever it may be, as a perfect gift. This is the Midas touch. Every moment is a golden moment, a diamond moment. Zero resistance to anything or zero clinging to anything that appears. whether at the level of the mind, body, circumstances, just this one perfect attitude of the perfect being Finishes all the suffering because suffering is nothing other than resistance or clinging to what is presenting in the moment. Baba always lives in the now. Baba is not present in the past or the future or the corrupted present. Baba is present beyond this time. past, present, and future.
always now, always here. Zero subservience to time. And yet, the beautiful paradox is absolute respect for the time. He doesn't come. and awaken us in our dream until it's the right time and yet zero subservience to time. So the being that I am in the here and now is eternity. I am historyless. I have no history. That's the one Baba is seeing. I don't even have the history of two seconds or two minutes or two hours or two years or 20 or 200 or 2000 or five. I, the being, has no history. I'm history less. But the mind made character and variety characters I have played have beginnings and endings. But I, the being, has no beginning or ending. So historyless, futureless. Then my presence makes the present moment perfect and divine. Thoughts report to me, time reports to me, experiences reports to me and Baba. So all the thoughts about the future, they report to me. So Baba shows me. A clear mirror. The thoughts about the future is just a part of the script. You, the being, is out of it. You have no subservience to time, to thoughts. Because mind likes to act as a sovereign. And likes to speak as though it's the king. Imposter.
the being with the wisest of the wise father, the king of kings, my father, either being can see with Baba very clearly. I, the being, is beyond birth and death, beyond beginnings and endings. So any thought that talks about past, future, has nothing to do with the truth. This is very, very clearly seen. Identity less. No man made, mind made identity. Innocence of a wise sage. like the innocent Lord who sages of sages Even right now, you can see any interpretations of what is being heard. Doesn't matter what the interpretation is. It's still mind chatter. Soul is nobody and no one. and doesn't want to be somebody or someone. As nobody, so we can experience Baba's company. In the most living, real manner. When the soul wears the costume of being somebody, then the distance is felt. So see how Baba's just seeing you and saying to you,
that even he is restless without you. So child, don't wear. The costume of somebody. Can you not just be nobody for me? For some short period of time. Om Shanti. So everyone here is nobody, right? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say all the very good Om Shanti to all the nobodies. <laughs> and, and, and the other beautiful thing was you said correct present and, and yet so much respect to time and Baba is forever, always. So no present, past and future beyond. A wonderful mm -hmm. paradox. Mm -hmm. And with that, mm -hmm. I'll humble, humble request, stillness, what you did yesterday. And chattering of mind, you said yesterday, you'll be uh, doing that uh, elaborately, ma making us understand. So all those points can be covered in morning class as well. Yeah, morning class, we did it. Remember the English class, we did it. All the we different did still? Did, achha, that was still only, okay. No, that was the layers of the mind. Stillness we did in Hindi class. Layers of the mind we did in English class. Whatever is coming whenever. <laughs> so we, I don't know. Whatever mm -hmm. comes whenever. Actually, yeah. evening classes are almost kind of gone for me. So now I feel more, uh, you know, power is there in the morning class also from your side. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. Stillness, we can cover whatever time Baba will, you know, tell mm -hmm. you to do. Mm -hmm. okay. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Today was going to take the Murli of 14, 4, 21. Piyu Vani. Everybody remembers Piyu Vani? Yes. Hearty, hearty treat. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Baba. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Sister, do we have um, a recording? I mean, uh, we have an audio recording of the players of mind, right? There is no video recording. Or do we have a video recording as well? I think maybe Sister uh, has uploaded it on YouTube. Sister, Sister Priya, Sister Priya, uh, for yesterday class, yes, lovely recording is already there for the stillness. But for layers of this thing, no, no recording of visu with visuals. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. All right. Thank you. Sister Yamini, I don't know. She would know. So Baba is saying that Om Shanti, sweet child, be introverted. Stay in the knowledgeable stage and imbibe these elevated versions of Baba. 
and you will then be able to benefit yourself and other souls. So when Baba says you will be able to benefit yourself, it is not that the soul needs any extra benefit, right? You're not the one who's benefiting anybody or benefiting yourself. Baba wants you to know as the one who's beyond needing anything. That's the biggest benefit you can bring to yourself is to know that you don't need any benefit. Yeah, you're beyond needing anything. Yeah. So decorate the temple of your heart and mind with the idols of godly virtues and spread the fragrance of pure thoughts. Yeah. So again, very important, as we read in the Murli of Silence, thoughts are useful tools for the one who is awake. Yeah? So from that aspect, listen to the word thoughts. What is the true elevated service child? What is the subtle and deep secret of doing accurate service when someone makes a mistake, that is, they play their part, because Baba will say that in the Murli, then along with cautioning that one, let the power of your yoga reach them in a subtle way and burn away his or her impure thoughts. Very beautiful. So Baba is saying that if you see someone maybe performing an act which may be harming their whatever their existence or whatever as a person also, then Baba is saying that you caution but with the power of yoga first. Yeah? Yeah? Power of yoga today also, Baba said, right? With the power of yoga, there is power of purity. And when there is power of purity of your own attention and of your own smriti, then you can transform the world. Yeah? So that is why Baba is saying, let yoga reach them in a subtle way first. And whatever that soul is believing itself to be, that will start to shift and change. Because we saw in the morning, right, that we are seeing the still points and we can see the entire story revolving around that still point. Something very similar, Baba is saying, that when you are able to see yourself as a still point and the other as a still point, then Baba's power will reach that soul. And Baba's vibrations will become a mirror for that soul to see their truth. Now you say something, it's effective and useful. Otherwise it's useless, our words are falling like whatever thoughts my uh, person identity has given. Those thoughts are like seeds which are falling on hard ground. <laughs> yeah, there's no point. <laughs> yeah, so plow it with the power of yoga first. Plow the earth. This is the most elevated true service. As well as that, also pay attention to yourself. Hmm? I will read the Murli now because then it's a long Murli. So Om Shanti. Each and every effort-making child, first of all, definitely has to adopt the stage of introversion. What happens in introversion? What happens in introversion from your experience, not from Gyani point 
from your experience what happens in introversion. A lot of benefit is merged in introversion. It is only by having this stage that you can be unshakable, constant, patient, humble, imbibe divine virtues, and achieve a completely knowledgeful stage. So do we remember yesterday, what did Baba say in the Murli on silence? Why do you need patience? And today also, oh mind, have patience. Why? Why do you need patience? Why does the soul need to see its patient self? Patience means acceptance. And acceptance means surrender. All three are interrelated. Yeah? So patience means, as Baba said um, in the Murli yesterday, that you will be able to see only because of the power of silence, that is introversion, you will be able to see the forms of maya. Then there can truly be the purity in your thought also that you take from Baba. There will be no impurity in that thought then because maya's form and maya's feeling and vibration is not getting mixed. Maya is not just a thought, it's a feeling and a vibration also. And it won't get mixed in your pure vibrations. Then whatever thought you will create is the purest quality thought. Yeah? So understanding when you detach, then you can use the tool with most efficiency. Just like when you are more detached in even a bodily relationship, then you can truly be loving. <laughs> hmm? So something similar, when I detach from the mind, then I can truly be using the instrument in a better way. Until then, I can't. Because instrument is the subject itself. Acting as a subject, acting as a sovereign. Yeah? So when you are not introverted, you cannot achieve a completely knowledgeful stage. <laughs> when not introverted, you cannot achieve a completely knowledgeful stage. This is because if you don't imbibe the elevated version that you hear personally and you don't go into their depths but just repeat the elevated versions you hear then those elevated versions are simply versions. And in the depth of introversion, there's true humility. Because in that, you're so detached from the person, I and mine in the mind. And it can't get mixed. So you can really experience that mind without you, the being, can really experience your truth without, I'm saying mind. The being can truly experience the truth of the self without the mind. True. And when you experience your truth without the personhood, without any identity with thoughts, then your mind will also serve you. It will become a temple for the deity. Yeah? 
So Baba is saying that, and then there's that humility is coming from no identity with the self-image that is there in the mind. Yeah, mind without any self-image. So Baba is saying that if you don't imbibe the elevated versions that you hear personally, then they will simply be versions. If the elevated versions are not heard, please listen, huh? If the elevated versions are not heard, this Murli was for Brahma Baba. We all know that, right? We all know that? No? This Murli was spoken for Brahma Baba's Purusharth by a soul with a 14-year-old body. Shiv Baba used that body to speak to Brahma and let him know the depths of knowledge for his Purusharth. Yeah? So if the elevated versions are not heard, in a knowledgeful stage, then Maya's shadow, and what is the knowledgeful stage? It's important to know that also. A silent being in its eternal form. Yeah? Silent being in its eternal form, which is aware of the ego mind also functioning at the same time. There's a separation. And you are capable of it. Each one of us is capable of it. That even when we are reading Murli, listening to Murli, I, the being, can keep myself separate from the ego mind, which can still do its own work at the same time. Yeah? So Baba is saying that Maya's shadow is cast on those elevated versions. If I don't hear it in knowledgeful stage, then Maya's shadow is cast on those elevated versions. When you simply repeat the elevated versions you hear, they are influenced by the impure vibrations of Maya. So Baba is not talking about Maya as a thought today. Baba is talking about Maya as a vibration. Hmm? So they are influenced by the impure vibrations of Maya. And then instead of you and others benefiting from them, loss is experienced. Which means if I, the being, am, it's like the person identity is part of, oh, sitting with that subtle identity also. Even with the subtlest identity, I, me, name, form, sitting here, reading Murli. It's mixed. It's all mixed. But that can be there in the mind in one very subtle way, vibration of Maya. But when I'm with Baba, and I know Baba's, it's like Baba's voice, Baba's body, Baba's using the faculties, but I, the being, know that I don't need the faculties to exist. Then Baba can use the faculties. But if I'm using faculties to experience life, to experience joy, to experience happiness, and I'm dependent on faculties to experience my truth, then already the vibration of Maya is mixed in those faculties. Yeah? But whereas when I know my existence before and beyond the faculties, and then I, the being, am really with Baba, being aware if there's any vibration of Maya hanging around because it's always hanging around, right? <laughs> so I'm aware of the vibrations of Maya and the being is with Baba and each one is capable huh, to be Trilokinath, 
to be aware of your incorporeal form, to be aware of the mental world and to be aware of the physical action. We are all capable of it. Yeah? So just use that power of yours that you have. And then it won't get mixed. It won't get mixed. Yeah? So Baba is saying, so when you simply repeat the elevated versions you hear, they are influenced by the impure vibrations of Maya. And then, instead of you and others benefiting from them, loss is experienced. Hence, child become completely introverted. So the tiny point with Baba, very aware, isolated from the mental and the physical world of the body and the outside and the mental world, that one, introverted, cannot be touched by any thought of the impure mind. So then only Baba's pure mind can give me the thoughts that I need to take from Baba and those will be the purest thoughts. Hmm? So attention, attention, attention. So Baba is saying, oh child, be completely introverted. Now, oh child, your mind is like a temple. Just as you always have fragrance in a temple, in the same way, only when the temple of your mind becomes pure, will pure thoughts emerge. So how will you purify your mind? How do you purify your mind? Do you remember yesterday's Murli? It's a very good thing to read that Murli before this Murli. So do you remember yesterday's Murli? What did Baba say? How do you purify your mind? Do you remember anybody who remembers? <laughs> yesterday we read not too long ago. <laughs> huh? Mm -hmm. How do we purify our mind? What is that? Remember getting unaffected from all the layers. Getting unaffected by all its layers, yes, very good. Remembrance. Remembrance, yes. Power of silence of the soul, remember? Power of the silence of the soul is lacking. Within that, there is power to discern and to judge. Do you remember that? Baba said yes, in that yes, will be yes, yes, very much. Thank you, Baba. Then you will have the power to discern and to judge Maya and then not to bring it into action. His exact words. Then the mind gets purified. And then now the mind is your server. It will serve you the deity soul. Don't step. forget that step. Because the mind is very quick at hearing it also. As Baba said, the fragrance of Maya will just jump in. <laughs> the vibrations of Maya are just waiting. So that's why we need to keep many murlis in our mind when we read one murli. Yeah? Then you get a whole picture of what Baba is saying. So Baba is saying that only image of pure deities, not devils, are kept in a temple, right? In the same way, each of you, my child, should decorate the temple. So the soul has to decorate, the king has to decorate the temple, right? The king decorates the temple of its mind and heart 
Baba never mixes the mind with the heart. He always keeps mind separate from the heart. Yeah? <laughs> because heart is an uncorrupted place of the soul. Mind still this is gets... today's Murli? No. We are reading. It's a Murli which is not on... Uh, it's best to listen because it's not on BKDR Luhar. Yeah? No. Somebody said to me. So Baba is saying that Decorate the temple. It's of there, the Didi. It's there on BK Dular. I opened it just. Now. It's there. I could not yeah. find it. I just oh. opened it. I'm reading it side by side. Ah, okay. Maybe they put it now. Yeah. Okay. Not today. I looked. I looked long time ago. Okay, that's good. Then if it's there. So can you open? It's fourteenth of April, twenty one. Yeah. So Baba is I saying, have opened it. Ah, okay. I think maybe for Brinda. Somebody can put the date if it's there on. On the chat. Okay, it's there. Okay, thank you. So Baba is saying that only images of pure deities, not devils, are kept in a temple. In the same way, each of you, my child, should decorate the temple of your mind and heart with the idols of all the divine virtues. Those virtues are to be free from attachment. To be free from greed, free from fear, patient and egoless because they are your divine qualities, the king's divine qualities. So if the king is awake, then his divine qualities will reflect in the mind. Yeah? So Baba is saying the divine qualities. So you, my child, has to make the temple. So you, the king, has to make the temple of your mind very bright and clear that is completely pure. So Sister Baba is using this king or uh, child. Tell me, I mean, not clear. You are, you are you, Baba is telling you right now to feel mm -hmm. us king. Tell the yeah. difference. You, the soul, is the king, no? King of the mind. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's written in yeah. Murli or now no, with a new understanding? Children, yeah, done it children. Oh. I'm seeing this king. Because because I'm, I'm not opened the Murli, I'm just jotting it down. Oh, perfect. So Baba yeah. is today addressing us uh, at Godly platform as king, king. not as child. Okay, no. thank you. A child who's a king of his heart. Yeah? <laughs> all right, all right. Because in Sunday right. Murli right. also, Baba had used that analogy, no? Thank king. you. Right, thank you. So only when the temple of yours becomes that bright and clear can you go to your lo very loving, bright and clear paradise. So when the mind merges in the soul, then the soul is ready to go. When the maya and the mind, everything merges back in the soul, right? Then the soul is ready to go to golden age. Is that clear so far, everybody? Okay. So you are now trying to make your mind, you the soul, is trying to make your mind completely bright and also to, I would not use the word control, Baba has used the word control, but what he means is maneuver. To control means to run it with love and mercy. Yeah, that is the meaning for the soul to control your physical senses and your mind, which are all influenced by the vices. All influenced by the vices today. Your physical senses and your mind are all influenced by the vices. Not only do you have to serve yourself, child, you also have to do this divine service of others. 
In fact, the meaning of doing service is very subtle and deep. Listen to this. Very subtle and deep. Service is very subtle and deep. Doing service is not just cautioning someone about a mistake. Now, see, this is uh, the difference in the Murli and the question answer. Okay. Doing service is not just cautioning someone about a mistake. No. You have to send them subtle vibrations with your power of yoga and burn away their impure thoughts first. And how do you do that? Hmm? See them as a uh, very powerful uh, uh, soul like I am and Baba is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how else? And when you are by not uh, by not uh, giving light on their part or the script that is playing and only seeing them as a tiny point of light that is huh? playing that part the script is playing out. Yeah. And there's one more thing that is needed. When you are when you are still sitting with Baba and uh, mm -hmm. you are shining light and yeah. you, are, you are doing service to all. Yeah, very good. One more thing. Well, you have uh, acceptance for their part. Yeah. Making sure your own mind is very clean. Yeah, you're not identified with the mind's feelings and thoughts because that identify identity and identification feeds the mind. If either being am identified with my own mind and then trying to send vibrations, then it's just artificial. Either being has to first make sure I'm totally out of the mind identification and then my mind is serving me and then automatically everything is happening from there. You don't even need to send. You just need to make sure you are clean. Means you, the being, is completely detached from your mind. Then Baba will use the mind. Don't worry. You, the being, is totally out of this. Any person feeling for that other one. You are free. They are free. Didi, yeah. you become the channel. <clears throat> yeah, you become, you the, become channel. the channel so that Baba can help them. It's not exactly. me, actually. Baba is using you. Exactly. Right. Exactly. You just pay attention to yourself. You stay, make sure you're in your truth with Baba. And make sure you don't identify with your mind. Then he will do the rest. Exactly. That's the only attention you need to pay. You really don't need to do anything else. Just make sure you're feeling so much love as Baba is feeling for the soul. And all the impure feeling and impure, it not necessarily negative or positive. It could be just attachment. It could be extra liking for someone. Not necessarily dislike. It could be extra liking. But that's in your mind. Are you totally detached from it first? Are you out of that identity of your own mind first? Now you are in your perfect self, which is like untouched by any thought of impure mind. Untouched. Now you're an open channel. Baba will use you the way he wants to use you. And your faculties, everything. This is the subtlest and the deepest service. Don't worry about giving anybody or seeing anybody as a soul. That ego loves to do all that work also. Just loves it. Seeing others as a soul. First, make sure you are in that highest feelings of purity 
of Baba is yours. That's your nishche 100% there. Then automatically everything will happen after that. There's really nothing to do. I was seeing them as a soul. I was seeing them as a soul. I was seeing them as a soul. Good, very good. What about you? <laughs> Who's seeing them as a soul? Where is your sense of self? Are you mixed with your mind? And Maya's vibrations as you? Nothing is happening after that. Or it may happen to the degree you are experiencing your maybe 20%, 30%, 40%, who knows. Just pay attention to being with Baba and let, let Baba. That's why just Baba and I, just isolate Baba and I. The sense of doing will disappear. It will just disappear in thin air. That's when you know, ego starts doing and giving vibrations also. That doing comes in that department then. <laughs> Somewhere something has to be done by ego, no? Yeah. Just be in that cocoon of Baba's pure feelings. And that is your pure feelings. Totally not claiming any aspect of the person mind to be yours. Not at all. Just living as a point of light with Baba. Being that is aware of its untouched perfection and beauty, pure auspicious feelings, total acceptance of each one's tree script as it is. Don't want it to change even in this moment, check. Any resistance or clinging to the present moment, check. Because ego is constantly in conflict with what is the experience in the present moment. Just know you are the observer of this present moment. However it's presenting itself, it's perfect as it is. All suffering finishes. Yeah? So Baba is saying that only when that temple of yours becomes the bright and clear, <clears throat> you're now trying to make your mind completely bright. Sorry, we read all of this. Which is so doing service is not just cautioning someone about a mistake. No, you have to send them subtle vibrations with your power of yoga and burn away their impure thoughts. This is the most elevated true service. Together with that, you also have to pay attention to yourself not just to your words and actions, you must not even have any impure thoughts in your minds because their vibrations reach many others and subtly cause a loss which would create a burden for you. This burden then becomes a bondage. What do you understand from this? It would be very interesting to hear. <laughs> hmm? Very it's heavy dose Baba gave. Huh. Because, because Baba is telling for uh, the purest services, uh, 
we need to do but at the same time he's telling we are doing everything reverse <laughs> and uh, he's he's saying don't do any service only but remain cleanest that's yeah. it exactly you just remain separate from the person mind and then baba will use the other mind then there will be no chance of any impurity getting mixed when we are using baba's mind yeah no chance of impurity getting mixed in a way baba is also using your pure mind and soul is the same there's no difference yeah and so baba will be using that pure mind Remember, Sunday Murli Baba had said, mind has created its own kingdom and that is the ego mind. So we are, we are so using ego mind as the subject. Ego mind is using everything as being the subject of every experience, right? Yeah. Sister, you are, <coughs> Sister you are not giving, uh, you are not sending any vibrations. You are just sitting still. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and your vibrations are automatically going. Automatically, exactly. So sending vibrations, Baba is not meaning, okay, now you sit here and you as a person send vibrations. Yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is not what Baba is meaning. Thought itself will become a bondage, which means any thought that you identify with is a bondage. Okay. Right? Any thought you identify with... And then with that bondage of that thought, I have to send vibrations. And there's some attachment mixed in that thought. And I have worn that thought as my dress. And that is me. Now that is a bondage. Now through that filter of that thought, I'm trying to send other souls vibrations. That's what the thought, thought mind does, no? You wear a particular thought as your dress. From the ego mind trying to do service, the doer, the service doer, that thought you were. This is a very subtle form of ego, hmm? extremely subtle. And the doer thought you were. Now, as a doer thought, you are now become that thought because you're wearing that thought as you and you don't even know. Now, as that thought, you're trying to send this one vibrations and that one vibrations. You're already caught up in the bondage of it. You're in the bondage. When I am already identified with one thought, yeah. the yeah. those your vibrations they automatically are reaching. Or is it is it like that? Or uh, please explain this. Yeah, if it's an impure thought that you're identified with then the vibrations of that thought will reach everywhere. Whatever you identify with will get life, right? It is like the soul, the sky is making a relationship with every cloud that is passing by. Yeah? So uh, that's why Baba told that uh, you are creating loss for everyone. Like it is automatically going. It's automatically in vibrations now. So that is why you can't really identify with the mind that has created its own Rajya kingdom, you know? Let, or let go of that mind. You can't associate and touch that mind, yeah? But it will continue to keep coming. It will continue to present itself. That is why you have to be alert at three levels, three Lokinath. Yeah, because it's constantly presenting itself. But that's where you will have power to discern and power to judge in your power of silence of who you are beyond words, beyond thoughts. When that one is awake, then that one has the power to judge and power to discern. Then you won't just give power to any thought in every thought. You will give power only to Baba's thought. First, you need to know yourself beyond the doership of the server also. Then that these are the very subtle forms of Maya mind, which are the royal rolled gold forms of Maya, like Baba talks about. Yeah? So Baba is saying, but really knowing yourself as that really naked soul is most important aspect of the knowledge completely naked, without any thoughts, without any words, 
needing nothing, no faculties also to exist, that one has to really be awake. Then that one can be the observer of all the other two layers constantly. Yeah, stainless being. Sister, yesterday you mentioned our vibrations can help any soul in many folds beyond any, you know, limits. So that's, yeah. you were talking about this stage, you know? So no, no doership and no clingingness, no identification, nothing and very cleanness just combined. And he's a doer. And that's how you were talking about those yeah. vibrations reaching to everyone. And that's Baba will do that needfully. Okay. Yeah. Baba will just use you as a channel. Yeah. It is because you have made that effort of being that silent being and separate from the mind, ego mind. That requires power, courage, and interest and, and real recognition of God and self. Yeah. Then that one can truly be with Baba and be aware that ego mind is not coming in between, <laughs> not getting mixed up. Whilst in action. Yeah, whilst in action. So does that mean that we don't slip? Of course we do. There are times we slip. And that's okay. Are you taking ownership and claiming that action also? So being detached even from that action, which may be so subtly present there, but you are separate from that action. You are not defining yourself. So attention, even when you're talking, you are still and silent. Even my hands are moving. I am still and silent. That awareness is constantly to be there. Then I can see, oh, ego mind is taking ownership of the hand moving and the mouth talking. It wants to claim it. Baba, I can see it. So internally, you can have that conversation with Baba. Whilst you're reading, Baba, I can see the ego wanting to claim. Okay, child, I'm there. I'm there. I'm with you. I'm with you. That means it will, uh, if I, uh, as, as you told, if I don't keep pay attention, always it will feel that I have done it. I have, uh, I was uh, saying, a karta pan ka bhan, it will come all the time, right? Is it yeah. that? And, and kartapan bhan is there as an ego mind, it's present. But am I identified with it? That is where the whole catch is. Yeah? Because it's not going to disappear just like that. It's going to be present, but it's not getting any attention from you. So it is beginning to become weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. So sister, it means I'm not taking any credit also, no? Exactly. No credit, no debit. Not even if the action goes something haywire, you're not claiming the ownership of that action also. This is also very important. <laughs> and that is the part you need the most. Part. Sister, clear the debit part a little clear if you can yeah. make it. Let's say, for example, as this one is being used, the mouth is being used to talk. And I can see somewhere the ego mind has claimed something. Yeah, let's just say it claimed something. Yeah. And I can see Baba it claimed already. And Baba can see. It's okay. I'm there. Surrender. Let it be. You are still the same. You're still the same. Nothing has happened. Baba is with you. Every moment Baba is present with you. You're coming into action. You're making this beautiful effort of watching, making sure that you're aware at all three levels. Hmm? You're aware at all three levels? Then what happens is Baba is at blotting paper. I love Baba as a blotting paper also. Baba is at blotting paper. <laughs> he blots. So the the either vibrations of those feelings and thoughts will not interfere in the environment and it will not spread, right? Because Baba blots it because you're very honest moment by moment with him internally, I the being. Baba, this is happening. Okay, Baba, that. 
It's like you're talking internally while you're reading. Does that make sense? Like there's a gap between each word of silence. And you are aware of that. So that is what Baba is talking about. Be aware at all three levels. Don't be just so focused in reading only. Step back. Be aware at all three levels, chat. Sister, I'm feeling Baba is right now here with us. I, I don't know why. <laughs> I'm really, I'm telling you, I can feel Baba right now. Yeah, because we each one has invoked Baba with our presence. Our silent presence, we have invoked Baba. So let him be there in every step, in every between every word. Yeah, just attention. You know, this is a very beautiful thing. Self is like a torch. Hmm? As a torch, light is my attention. Yeah? Light jo torch se aati hai na, that is my attention. Now, torch can shine light on either the objects in the mind. Can it shine light on itself? No. No. But can it ever be affected by the objects that it is seeing? It feels so, but with new understanding, no. No. Yeah. So all I, the being, has the power is now, I instead of keeping my light shining, I, the torch, keeping my light shining on the objects in the mind of the impure mind, which has created its own kingdom, I turn attention towards Baba. I'm still the same. I was the same when my light was shining on the mind. And I'm still the same when my light is shining on Baba. Earlier, I was trapped in my mind as a mind thought, believing myself to be one of those thoughts and objects in the mind. Now, when I see Baba, I see, oh, I'm aware of the mind also. Now I'm also aware of my truth, 100%. But I'm also aware of the ego mind with Baba. It can't really at all deceive me. So you are like in that awareness with Baba and you are together and you're aware of the mind together. Aware, huh? not engaged. Aware of the mind together, but not interested. So it's like you're reading Murli, you're with Baba, or you're listening to Murli, you're with Baba, and you're listening to Murli, and your ego mind will have something to say so every now and then it will say something, it will keep bringing something in. But you're aware. You're not giving it your life of attention. True? So mm. just be aware. Yeah? So that is why Baba is saying, together with that, you also have to pay attention to yourself, child. Not just to your words and actions. You must not even have any impure thoughts in your minds because their vibrations reach many others and subtly cause a loss. So no identity with the mind, then nothing can reach anybody, which would create a burden for you. This burden then becomes a bondage. It's a very subtle uh, account where I, in the as a person, am seeing the other as a person and I've created an account. Yeah? <laughs> so can you see how subtle Brahma Baba's practice must have been that so attention must have been so subtle so children be cautious and also do this divine service of others which will automatically happen okay so this is the alokic duty of you serviceable children to be free of any sense of doership, in parentheses. Those who do such service should not take any service from others. What does that mean? A few days ago, Baba said that in Sakar Murli also. 
Mr. Dependency. Dependency. Like Dadi had somebody to take care of her physical body and was dependent, physically was dependent. Detached so from it also, detached from that dependency also. You may need to take service. I may need someone's help physically, emotionally. Somebody may need somebody's help. But can you see this help is coming from Baba? They are not helping you. Baba is helping you. Then you're not taking service from as a person from another person. Does that make sense? Beautiful understanding. Perfect sense. Beautiful understanding. And that is what it means. Do not take service. Because you're living in this world and there is a physical body and there is a situations that can come. Everything can happen. We are cooperating, living with each other through these bodies. Of course we do. But it is not anybody doing anything for me, the being. It is Baba using others' bodies and others' minds to help me, the being, realize myself. It's Baba doing it. So then you're not taking service from anybody. True? So that's what Baba is saying. This is the alokic duty of you serviceable children. Those who do such service should not take, yeah, all are pointing to Baba. Those who do not do such service should not take service from others. Even if you happen to make a mistake, correct that for all time with the power of your intellect's yoga. So Baba is saying the soul is giving the power to the intellect. We really have to understand the language, yeah? Because if you, as we read other Murlis also. So with the power of your intellect's yoga, yeah? So the soul will use its intellect to connect with Baba and then it will make sure that I, the being, internally am very free from thoughts, words, and actions. No identity with anything. Hmm? When I'm free, then I can use everything the way Baba wants me to use it. So even if you happen to, sorry, we read that, as intense effort maker instantly realizes as soon as he receives even a little signal and transforms himself and pays proper attention as he moves along from then on. Yeah, attention. This is the duty of the soul that is using, in brackets, broad intellect. O oh, breath of my life, O oh, pran piyari, this is deep significance in completely sacrificing your body, your mind, and wealth into this imperishable, sacrificial fire of knowledge, of self-sovereignty created by the Supreme Soul. <laughs> Very beautiful. Sister, you got to repeat it with a little more experience because it is very important and vital. Oh, breath of my life. Baba is talking to the soul, huh? There is deep significance in completely sacrificing your body because body brings the sense of I am doing it. Action consciousness. Yeah? So I don't have a body. I have been given a body which is to be used for God's task. Yeah? Am I really using it for God's task? That's the checking to be done. If ego mind is using God's body, 
Or am I aware of the ego mind so that ego mind doesn't use, but I, the being used with this body, with Baba, without identifying with the ego mind? Attention. Just attention. Yeah? Then Baba is saying, mind, sacrifice your mind to me. So that we have seen in the entire Sunday Murli was on that. Yeah? Sacrificing your mind. And wealth. So Baba is saying, have you put the wealth also? Means what? Do you feel that everything is coming from Brahma Baba's Bhandara? Do you, the being, feel that? Mm -hmm. So how would you use Brahma Baba's Bhandara? As a trustee. Yeah, as a trustee, which means what? In gratitude. Not those. In gratitude, very good. In gratitude and carefully, not wasting anything. Carefully, not wasting anything. That in itself can also become an obsession, also, huh? Did you as a trustee? As a trustee, yes. But we need to understand the word trustee, which means it's all really not even real money. It's not real wealth. It's all monopoly money. But yet, we are using it for whatever that part of that matter has been given to us. Internally, the soul will experience that it doesn't belong to me. Internally, the soul will experience that. So when you're buying vegetables, as a part you're playing, is it the money your part has earned or the husband part has earned? What is your awareness? It's Baba's, Baba's offering. It's Baba's offering to me. Yeah. It's Baba's offering. And when that internally you have that feeling, do you think it will reflect in the family around you also? Let's say for some something in the house that's needed, it's expensive, you need to buy. Who comes to the mind first to ask? The one who owns the money, who has the money. <laughs> <laughs> who, who do you ask in the mind first? Who, who do you really ask? Well, in real sense, of course, Baba, but what I'm saying in the logic terms, right? Who owns, who, who manages the money? <laughs> he who owns and who manages and what is my awareness? But at my place, I don't owe and manages, but uh, this one behind him, he keeps on asking about his car. He has not bought it last five years. So... This one has no interest, sister. I say whatever Baba will give within I feel and no, no interest. It's just, it's good to check I the being. And it's okay. Even if it's something else or someone else is coming, no problem. In that very moment, step back and see, it was a person mind thinking. And I see with Baba that person mind objectively. And I know that the truth is I the being, the tiny point. Really go in that feeling first. Yeah? And I the being, the tiny point. Really nothing belongs to me here. And that tiny point is seeing it really, it belongs to nature and it belongs to Baba. And then from that pure feeling, you and Baba together, now Baba will make you Whatever action has to be played in the film as a part will be played. But you internally your feeling is that everything belongs to Baba. 
Although in the movie scene on the set, I'm playing a part to ask, but actually even that soul knows that it all belongs to Baba. Whether Gyan or not, it doesn't matter. But even that soul knows it belongs to Baba. From that feeling, now come and play and play the dialogue, interaction, whatever. So sister, I presume, I presume it, no, not uh, seeing him also acknowledging Baba or feeling Baba. It's my uh, very purest, sincere uh, perception. It is the truth of that soul yeah. at the level of the core essence. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah does that go on anything? Perfect, perfect, perfect. Even not knowing, no, not acknowledging, but the truth is that only. Yes. Truth is that. Yes, yes. And you will find hearts and minds of others also change. If at the core essence you are feeling and experiencing that. Yeah, so that is what Baba is saying. Wealth also is sacrificed to Baba into this imperishable sacrificial fire, imperishable. Which means the power of it is imperishable. Yeah, of knowledge, of self-sovereignty. Soul is a self-sovereign. When you sacrifice the mind, the mind which pretends to be sovereign, also dies in it. Means it gets merged in it. Yeah? Created by the Supreme Soul. From the moment you say that you have sacrificed your body, mind and wealth, that is you have surrendered everything into the sacrificial fire and died alive. Died means died alive. Then from that moment, nothing remains yours. In that too, you first have to use your body and mind fully for doing service. Yeah. So somebody asked this one that, so then do you not go out with the soul who's playing the role of a husband where if he needs you to come somewhere? Of course you'd go. Where it's urgent, you go. It's needed, you go. But you're not going as that one's wife. You're going as representing Baba's, uh, your husband and your Baba's wife. You're representing Baba there. Yeah, that's how you go anywhere you go. That's true. This is unlimited uh, viewpoint, no? Baba's wife go. It's a very vast understanding, very unlimited way. And that is what Baba really is. If you're really experiencing that truth with Baba, you will feel that I'm representing Baba wherever I go. It doesn't matter who is tagging along in the drama, but I'm representing my Baba, whether in the form of a, as a wife, as a mother, it doesn't matter. I'm representing Baba. Angira, you're muted. I don't know if you're speaking. Yeah, but does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So you go everywhere, wherever it's needed. Everywhere means wherever it's needed. I'm Baba's wife. Either being in Baba's wife. It's a very different way to really... You will find it comes all very naturally. Sister, when challenges comes, so Baba's wife becoming is very easy. I feel in my case, mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, what a fiasco. This bhai's account was taken by someone and I can't tell you how 24 hours or maybe 36 hours went in that. Uh, everybody asking money from, I don't know, it was such a fiasco. I could never feel it. So yeah. with new understanding, no suffering for this one. And I was really representing as Baba's wife. And he, to that extent, he folded his both hands and thanked Baba. And my checking was, let anything. And the person who did it, I didn't even blame that soul. Seeing that soul shining, 
in that Baba's womb, maybe more than, uh, you know, this yoga's part. And daughters and son-in-law and everyone, they were kind of all, that no blood was there. It, it was such a panic scene, but for me, nothing, nothing. But in simple things that Baba's wife is not doing anything. Yeah. The, so tell me now why it's happening that. That's beautiful, no? Your presence was doing everything with Baba. In not doing anything, you were doing everything. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. In not doing anything, you did most. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. by being, you did the most. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So just by being, by just representing God everywhere you go, you are just there as Baba's angel, Baba's wife, sometimes Baba's daughter, Baba's child, not daughter or son, but Baba's child. If parents are parts that are playing, I'm representing Baba as my, you know, my parent. And how would a God's child be? Like that. Then in that, you will see all the other forms of Maya. Majority merges on its own. Almost 80%. And 20% that comes, you can see it with detachment and not get entangled in it. Beautiful, lady. Oh, mm-hmm. So that is all Baba is wanting us to really experience this. Every aspect of living life with him. Yeah, we will finish it here. But uh, very beautiful and deep murli. Later also it goes on and we will read it for another two days it looks like. But we'll take our time. As Baba said, no, don't just read it like a scripture. Then you're actually doing this service. Read it, understand it, imbibe it, be it. Slowly, doesn't matter if you read even one paragraph. But just understand it and, and really see how do I, the being, really practically use it. Yeah? And you will find golden age you don't need to wait for. You're experiencing it here and now. <laughs> oh, Shanti. Oh, Shanti. Thank you, Baba. Om Shanti. Thank you, Baba. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Baba. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti.